very good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha television the perfect show to kick start your day bringing you the top national international sports and business news i'm ashwarya kapoor and here are the headlines us announces withdrawal from paris climate agreement it says deal favors with china and india world leaders expressed disappointment India and Russia ink 12 agreements including building the two last units of Kudankulam nuclear power plant India also gets entry into Shanghai cooperation organization Arun Jaitley allays the fears of economic slowdown due to demonetization assures the security forces are in a position of strength at the line of control And Annie Murray and Stan Wawrinka reached the third round of men's singles at French Open. Bobana and partner win in opening match of mixed doubles. We are getting out uh, with those words. Uh, U.S. President uh, Donald Trump announced his country's withdrawal from the 2015 Cra Paris Climate Accord. Now, Trump said that he was open to renegotiating aspects of the agreement, which was inked under his predecessor Barack. Now, the step fulfills a campaign promise while also acutely dampening global efforts to curb global warming. Now, United Nations and the world leaders expressed disappointment over the U.S.'s move. So we're getting out, but we will start to negotiate and we will see if we can make a deal that's fair. And if we can, that's great. And if we can't, that's fine. Donald Trump confirming that the U.S. will quit Paris Climate Agreement. The world's second largest greenhouse gas emitter will remove itself from the global treaty, quitting the international effort to address dangerous global warming. Trump claimed that the accord harms American jobs. The Paris Climate Accord is simply the latest example of Washington entering into an agreement that disadvantages the United States to the exclusive benefit of other countries, leaving American workers, who I love, and taxpayers to absorb the cost in terms of lost jobs, lower wages, shuttered factories, and vastly diminished economic production. The Paris Agreement of 2015 commits the U.S. and 187 other nations to keep a global temperature rises well below 2 degrees Celsius. Speaking at the White House, Trump claimed rival economies like China and India were treated more favorably in the pact. Under the agreement, China will be able to increase these emissions by a staggering number of years, 13. They can do whatever they want for 13 years, not us. India makes its participation contingent on receiving billions and billions and billions of dollars in foreign aid from developed countries. United Nations and leaders world over expressed disappointment over U.S.'s decision, saying that it will be an abdication of U.S. leadership on a key global challenge. Former U.S. President Barack Obama, whose administration negotiated the Paris Accord, said that the decision would leave American workers behind those in countries who remain a part of the agreement. I do respect this decision, but I do think it is an actual mistake, both for the U.S. and for our planet. I reaffirm clearly that the Paris Agreement remains irreversible and will be implemented, not just by France, but by all the other nations. It is deeply disappointed with the U.S. position. The Paris Agreement is a good deal for Canada, and it's a good deal for the world. It will create good jobs. The clean growth economy is where the world is going, and Canada is going to be part of it. The transformation envisaged in the Paris Agreement is already underway. The Secretary General remains confident that all other parties to the Paris Agreement will continue to demonstrate vision and leadership, along with very many cities, states and businesses in the United States and around the world, by working for the low-carbon, 
resilient economic growth that will create quality jobs and markets for the 21st century economic prosperity. There will be no penalty for leaving with the Paris deal based on the premise of voluntary emissions reductions by participating countries. However, in triggering the official withdrawal procedures, Trump has sparked a lengthy process that would not conclude until November 2020. While Trump said that he was ready to renegotiate the deal, the leaders of France, Italy and Germany said in a joint statement that the U.S. could not unilaterally do so. The UN body that facilitated the deal also said it cannot be renegotiated. Nevertheless, analysts say that the US's withdrawal from the Paris Agreement will make it more difficult for the world to reach the goals that it set for itself in the Paris Agreement. If we continue to emit uh, carbon emissions at the rate that we have been, if we take that business as usual approach, uh, the climate at the end of the 21st century is going to look pretty unrecognizable relative to the 20th century climate and that's, uh, that's, that's not going to be a good thing for, for a lot of people and living things on earth. So we're getting out. Trump also declared that the U.S. would stall all contributions to the United Nations Green Climate Fund. The headquarters of the Paris City administration was lit up in green in protest at the U.S.'s decision. The U.S. contributes about 15% of global emissions of carbon, but it is also a significant source of finance and technology for developing countries in their efforts to fight rising temperatures. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. On to the other top story, India and Russia have signed 12 agreements, including the St. Petersburg Declaration. Now, crucial among the agreements is the one for setting up the last two units of the Kundankulam nuclear power plant, with Moscow's help in Tamil Nadu. Here's a report. For the period 2017 India and Russia signed five agreements, including building two new reactors for the Kudangkulam nuclear power station in Tamil Nadu. Russia also agreed to loan India $4.2 billion to help fund construction. Declaration allow adopt kiya hai. Ek aisa declaration jo ki na keval dono deshon ke arthik tatha rajanitik srirta ka vikas aur mark process karega, balki vaishvik uthal puthal mein srirta ka ek benchmark sabit hoga. В ходе нашей беседы с господином премьер-министром было отмечено успешное сотрудничество в сфере мирного атома. Хотел бы на это особо обратить внимание. Введен, как известно, в строй первый блок атомной электростанции Кудам-Кулам, при строительстве которого использовались самые современные и надежные российские технологии. Начал вырабатывать электроэнергию второй блок станции. А в октябре 2016 года на совместной с господином Моди видеоконференции мы дали старт сооружению третьего и четвертого блоков АЭС. И мы еще раз подтвердили совместные планы возвести в Индии не менее 12 энергоблоков российского дизайна, что станет большим вкладом в реализацию планов по развитию атомной энергетики страны. Other agreements relate to granting access to Rose Patent Experts, to Indian Digital Library of Traditional Knowledge, promotion of export of precious stones and jewellery of India and cultural exchanges. Russia affirmed its strong support to India's candidature for a permanent seat in the reformed UN Security Council and a membership in the nuclear supplier group and other non-proliferation regimes. President Putin announced that India will formally become a member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization within a week. The SEO is a political, economic and military bloc founded in 2001 in Shanghai by the leaders of China, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. As far as our international cooperation goes, there is one thing I'd like to point out. Через неделю мы зафиксируем полноформатное вступление Индии в Шанхайскую организацию сотрудничества. SCOT हमारे membership के लिए भी आपका proactive role रहा है, सक्रिय भूमिका रही, और उसके कारण अब हम विधिवत रूप से SCO के member बनने जा रहे हैं। मैं उसके लिए आपने जो कुछ भी initiative लिए 
During the talks, the issue of terrorism also came up for discussion. Russian President Vladimir Putin asserted that no matter where the threat of terrorism comes, it is unacceptable and that Russia always supports India in its fight against it. Putin also refused to have any tight military relations with Pakistan. He assured that Russia's relations with Pakistan will have no impact on trade between India and Russia. After their annual bilateral summit, the two leaders addressed CEOs of the two countries. Prime Minister Modi invited Russian companies to invest in defense and other sectors. manufacturing <laughs> GDP 16 to 25 percent तक ले जाने के लिए उत्सुक हैं हमारी नीतियों का निर्धारण भी इसी चीजों को प्रमोशन में ले उस दिशा में रहता है रूस की कंपनियां हमारे यहां इस अभिगम का लाभ लेते हुए भारतीय कंपनियों के साथ भागीदारी करें इसके लिए मैं उनको निमंत्रण देता हूं और उनका अनुभव उत्तम रहेगा Prime Minister Modi will attend for the first time the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum as guest of honor. Main event of this year's forum, which is modeled on the World Economic Forum, aside from Putin's keynote speech, will be the panel discussion that he and Narendra Modi will participate in. Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, back home in Jammu and Kashmir, at least five Pakistani soldiers were killed and six others injured in a retaliatory firing by the Indian Army in Kashmir's Bimbeer and Batal sectors on Thursday. Earlier in the day, two militants were killed and two soldiers injured in an encounter in Kashmir's Sopor area. Two AK-47 rifles, five magazines and 107 live bullets were recovered from the slain militants. According to the police, the militants were behind a grenade attack on a police party near a bank in Sopor on Wednesday. Meanwhile, in another development, Pakistan violated ceasefire by shelling forward posts along the line of control in a Rajori and Punch districts. A general engineering reserve force laborer was killed, uh, while four others, including a BSF Jawan, was injured. Army Chief General Bipin Rawat is in Srinagar reviewing the security situation in the valley with the seven uh, commanders, including all uh, core commanders of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, it was retaliated by a fire, so police also returned the fire, uh, the security forces returned the fire. As a result, these two terrorists, Azaz and Basharat, got eliminated. Mm -hmm. Both are local terrorists and Hezbollah Mujahideen se taluk rakhne wale hain. This operation ke dauran, humare ko cordon karne ke baad, कारगर फायर आया जिसके अंदर हमारे दो घायल दो जवान घायल हुए जो मिलिटेंट्स अंदर थे उनको कई बार मौके दिए सरेंडर करने के लिए लेकिन इसके बावजूद हमारे पे भारी मात्रा में फायर डाली गई और इस फायर के जवाब में हमने उन दोनों टेररिस्ट को मिलिटेंट्स को मार गिराया सीमाओं की चाक चौबंद सुरक्षा होनी चाहिए और इसीलिए कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव इंटीग्रेटेड बॉर्डर मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम के तहत radars, lasers, cameras and in this case, command and control today we will be able to try to protect our country from the Sima from the whole way. Meanwhile, Defence Minister Arun Jaitley has assured the country that the Indian Army and the Border Security Force have been dominating the line of control over the past few weeks. He also slammed Pakistan for fomenting cross-border terrorism and scuttling chances of a dialogue. Indian forces have foiled multiple infiltration attempts by terrorists from Pakistan recently. Defence Minister Arun Jaitley says that this has enabled Indian forces to build pressure on both Indian militant groups and foreign terrorists. Jaitley also stressed that India has taken steps to ease tensions with Pakistan. But the neighbour responded by orchestrating attacks at Indian Army bases in Pathankot and Uri. The swearing in of the government, when the Sark neighbors were invited, Pakistan Prime Minister was invited. And our Prime Minister dropped in at Lahore at a social function uh, in Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's uh, family were all steps intended to ease in the tension. But each one of these has been responded by, let us say, a Pathan court or an Uri or even the mutilation of two of our soldiers. 
and therefore that environment which must exist for a talk has been successfully prevented by Pakistan. The defense minister also dismissed reports of mounting unrest and public anger in Kashmir and said that the situation on the ground was mostly normal. His assertion came in the wake of Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley also allayed the impact of demonetization on economic growth and stressed that the current growth of 7 to 8% was fairly reasonable by Indian standards. He also clarified that the RBI will give an accurate figure of a defunct notes returned once the counting process gets completed. The day after government data showed the economy in slowdown, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley dispelled concerns that it was due to demonetization. Against a backdrop of 6.1% growth in the fourth quarter this year, Jaitley outlined the achievements of the NDA government in the last three years. He said demonetization created a new normal and was a joint step in squeezing out the cash and shadow economy. There are several factors which can contribute to a GDP in a particular quarter. Some slowdown visible given the global and the domestic situation even prior to the demonetization in the last year. But I do believe that in the current global situation, a 7 to 8 percent growth, which is at the moment the Indian normal, is a fairly reasonable by global standards, very good. By our own standards, fairly reasonable level of growth. Jaitley reiterated that improving position on non-banking performing assets that were weighing down on the balance sheets of banks is a work in progress and a major challenge. RBI, apne jitni bhi niyam the unke tahet ek prayas kar rahi thi. Ab ek aur kadam ham logon ne uthaya hai. Meanwhile, row over beef eating and cattle trade kept the political circles engaged on Thursday. Now, this despite Finance Minister Arun Jaitley insisting that the new central notification will not interfere with the state laws on slaughtering animals. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley pressed that the animal markets are meant for farmers and not for traders. He also defended last week's notification, which said that the prohibition of cow slaughter mentioned in Article 48 of the Constitution is not an enforceable article but a directive principles of state policy and mandates that the states uh, have uh, to bring laws to ban cow slaughter. Incidents of violence including attempt to disrupt supply of vegetables and milk to Mumbai and other cities uh, marked farmers strike which started on Thursday in Maharashtra. The farmers have launched the agitation to press uh, various demands including a loan waiver. A curfew was imposed in uh, Yellow in a Nashik district where 14 policemen were injured in stone pelting. Now, protesters in Satara, Kolapur and Nashik districts uh, tried to disrupt the supply of milk and vegetables to Mumbai late on Thursday. Now, traders in Mumbai claim that they have not been affected by the stir but uh, said uh, that the supply from production centres across the state would be affected if the strike continued. Meanwhile, Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Farnavis, while expressing a willingness to hold talks with the agitating farmers alleged, that it was the opposition NCP and the Congress who were instigating them. Now, a committee has been asked to suggest measures to resolve farmers' issues. जब तक सरकार किसान की कर्ज मुक्ति नहीं करती उत्पादन खर्च अधिक पन्ना टके मुनाफा इसका ये बना के किसान के अनाज या धान्य को भाव नहीं देती तब तक ये हमारा चलने वाला है सरकार के दरवाजे पूरे तरीके से खुले हैं हम लगातार बातचीत कर रहे हैं हम आगे भी बातचीत करेंगे हमने उनको बातचीत के लिए निमंत्रित किया है और मुझे लगता है कि अगर किसानों के हितैषी होंगे और किसानों के हित में काम करना चाह रहे होंगे तो निश्चित रूप से वो हमारे साथ बातचीत करके इसमें से मार्ग निकालेंगे सरकार ने सारे विकल्प खुले रखे हुए है सरकार किसी बात पर अड़ी हुई नहीं है जितनी मांगे है वो सारी मांगों पर हम सकारात्मक है तो मुझे लगता है कि इस प्रकार से हड़ताल को समाप्त कर दिया जाना चाहिए विशेष रूप से नगर जिला 
पुणे जिले का कुछ भाग और नाशिक जिले में ये प्रखरता से हुआ है मराठवाड़ा के एक दो गांव में वो हुआ है कुछ कृषि उत्पन्न बाजार समितियों में हुआ है और कुल मिलाकर वो पीसफुल रहा है लेकिन कुछ जगह थोड़ा सा पत्थरबाजी भी हुई है मैं ऐसा मानता हूं कि किसानों के नेता ऐसी पत्थरबाजी नहीं कर सकते निश्चित रूप से कुछ राजनीतिक पार्टी के कार्यकर्ताओं ने इसकी आड़ में पत्थरबाजी करने का प्रयास किया है सरकार सभी किसानों के साथ किसान नेताओं के साथ बातचीत करने के लिए तैयार है ये हल निकलना जरूरी है बातचीत के माध्यम से कोई प्रश्नों का हल निकल सके The tremors were felt in Delhi and other parts of North India after a moderate intensity earthquake measuring 5 on Richter scale today hit Haryana. Now as per the Meta department uh, the epicenter of the quake was the Rohtak district in Haryana. The depth of quake was 22 kilometers and it occurred in the early hours this morning. There were no immediate reports of any loss of life or damage to property. हमारे अकॉर्डिंग के हिसाब से ये आज सुबह चार बज के पच्चीस मिनट पर यह भूकंप महसूस किया गया है ये रीजन रोहतक हरियाणा में है ये डिस्ट्रिक्ट रोहतक हरियाणा से है सर पाँच मैग्नीट्यूड का रिएक्टर स्केल पे है और इसकी डेप्थ जो है जमीन से बाईस किलोमीटर नीचे यहाँ पे है ये एक्चुअली मॉडरेट अर्थकेक होते हैं जैसे फाइव का तो अभी तक तो कोई किसी प्रकार की हानि या नुकसान या किसी बिल्डिंग के कॉलेज होने या किसी प्रकार की कोई जानकारी अभी तक मिली नहीं है और जहाँ तक है कि मॉडर्न अर्थक के साथ नहीं होगा उतना ज़्यादा बस भूकंप के झटके जो है आसपास महसूस किए गए लोगों के द्वारा बिग स्टोरी कमिंग इन फ्रॉम फिलीपींस वे गन फायर वॉज हर्ड एट अ होटल एंड कसिनो रिसोर्ट इन फिलीपीन कैपिटल मनीला टुडे नाउ पीपल रैन स्क्रीमिंग आउट ऑफ द रिजॉर्ट वर्ल्ड मनीला विच इज अक्रॉस द रोड फ्रॉम वन ऑफ द मेन टर्मिनल ऑफ द फिलीपींस इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट इस्लामिक स्टेट ग्रुप क्विकली क्लेम रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी फॉर द अटैक According to the site intelligence group that monitors terrorist organizations, I have said that a lone wolf soldier from its group carried out the attack. There were no immediate reports of any fatalities or injuries. As per reports, uh, Resorts World Manila was in lockdown and police were in control of the situation. Meanwhile, U.S. President Donald Trump labeled the incident as a terror attack and offered his uh, thoughts and prayers to those affected. At the moment we only know of one suspect. The affiliation, the identity is not known. We believe that our security measures were enough. They will be reviewed. But at this time we have more important things to look at, not the security of our staff and the patrons of the building. On to cricket now. England's uh, batting mainstay Joe Root slammed an unbeaten century as they thrashed Bangladesh by 8 wickets in the ICC Champions Trophy opener on Thursday. Root not out at 133 was the top scorer for England while opener Alex Sahil's uh, fell 5 short of a century to help their chase a target of 306. Root was adjudged the man of the match for his sublime knock. The skipper Ian Morgan uh, also played an unbeaten knock off for uh, 75 or 55 balls. as england uh, cruised home without any trouble earlier put on to bat first bangladesh did well to post a 305 for 6 with opener tamim iqbal making his ninth odi 100 it seemed that bangladesh would get close to 330 but uh, england uh, fought back uh, through lime plunkett uh, who dismissed iqbal and rahim of successive balls in the 45th over Meanwhile, the 2015 world champion Australia will take on New Zealand in their first match of the Eight Nation Tournament at Birmingham's Ed Baston Ground today. Group A pits together Australia, New Zealand, England, and Bangladesh, while Group B sees India, South Africa, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan battling it out for a place in the semi-finals. And at the French Open, world number one Andy Murray and Stan Wawrinka reached the third round of the men's singles, while Murray came from a set down to be beat uh, Slovakian Martin Klizan six seven six two six two seven six. World number three Wawrinka defeated Ukraine's Alexander Doglopolov six four seven six seven five in the second round match. The seven seed Marin Cilic also moved to the third round after straight sets victory over Konstantin Kravchuk of Russia. Juan Martin Del Potro and uh, John Isna also progressed to the next round. And from the Indian squad, Rohan Bopanna and his Canadian partner Gabriela 
Dabrowski made a positive start to their mixed doubles campaign. The Indo-Canadian combination notched up a 6-0, 6-1 win over Australian pair of Jessica Moore and Matt Reed in their opening match that lasted just 39 minutes. News from the Badminton World, Sana Neval and B Sai Praneeth made a short uh, work of the opponents in uh, the women's and men's singles, uh, respectively, to reach the quarterfinals of the Thailand Open uh, Grand Prix Badminton Tournament. Now, second seed uh, Sina beat uh, Ying Ying Lee of Malaysia 21-11, 21-14 in a 40-minute match uh, to set up a clash with the Japanese qualifier Haruko Suzuki. The Singapore Open champion Praneeth beat a nine-seed Malaysian opponent 21-13, 21-18. The third-seeded Indian will now face Thailand's Kanthopan Wang Chao Ren today. However, it was curtains for promising Saurabh Verma and Sai Ujethia in the men's and women's singles competitions respectively. 12-seed Saurabh fought hard before going down narrowly 16-21, 25-23, 11-21 to 5th seed uh, Chris uh, Leveredres of France, while uh, Sai Ujita Rao also went down in straight games, 15-21, 17-21 to Thailand opponent. That's all in this edition of news. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead.